sponsorship hasn't actually changed since the Clinton administration. We're still rocking the Chipotle burrito toss, the Dunkin' Donuts dash, and the kiss can. Not that there's anything wrong with the kiss can. I go through a lot of movies. I can't help but notice that we're all still sitting through this glorified slideshow of traditional advertising before the trailers roll. I also go to a lot of bars. Here's the thing. Bars have displays of all kinds now, but they fail to capture the mobile and social actions that are happening all around them. It's exactly why we're building Grandstand, to transform any display into a platform for real-time social games, where check-ins, likes, and tweets can unlock individual and group rewards. Let's go on a little journey. Let's pretend that this is up on the Jumbo Tron at a basketball game. For every mobile action, say, a Foursquare check-in, a tile is flipped. Once the board is filled, prices are unlocked. The same types of prices that are already being given away, only now instead of winning the Chipotle burrito, Verizon Center with the Wizards Play is now trending on Twitter. Here's another one that we developed for Pinkberry last year. We're also building out a series of visualizations to provide an alternative for something like the Twitter fault. Not only showing the most recent tweets and photos at an event, but also visualizing things like volume, velocity, and influence. All you need to run Grandstand is a display in a web browser, that's it. The team, Grandstand is a product of iStrategy Labs. We're a 17-person creative agency based in Washington, D.C. What's up, D.C. Tech? So the big opportunities we see, I touched on some of them, movie theaters, sporting events, the long tail, bars, restaurants, coffee shops, retail, what's next? Figuring out what a free version of Grandstand should look like. We just started a new program for Hilton Worldwide, where we're sitting right now. Finally, integrating our aptly named experiment, Social Machines, where these same mobile inputs allow you to pop open refrigerators. We just did this for GE. Shoot off fireworks around the crazy futuristic stuff. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, it's one thing to try to do really add and make digital out of home in that sort of way. Yeah, I didn't actually mention outdoor advertising in right. our longer deck with a couple of game boards. You can see, think about like a white label gift card for a retail storefront, but also out of home advertising. If you're checking in or, or retweeting or liking something on Facebook and your avatar and name pops up on the screen, now 150 bucks to bed up and beyond or whatever it is. And the second question is with the kind of suite of social apps yeah. that you're building, how do you get up there? Are you integrating with the CMS systems that they currently run or like what's about there? So right now we're delivering via the web. So for Hilton, your web. Yeah, Hilton headquarters is HiltonHQ.getGrandstand.com. No one needs to know that that's what? the problem except the people running the application. And uh, are you basically creating a template of these social games so that they just have to put their branding on it and they're good to go? Yeah. Or again, this gets back to you know each brand will want to want to customize these things and then they're going to kind of push you into you know creating a custom version just for them. How do you get push that? No, out? so that, that's the right question. So right now I mentioned we're a creative agency, so we've had you know four years and decades of experience at this point collectively of building custom solutions. So right now each one is a custom conversation. What we're working on right now is that. White, is that white label that's self-service, so being able to upload for the Twitter visualization, for example. My watch is coming off, I'm going to do this right here. Sorry. Being, being able to upload your own creative, your own event, key in the hashtag, you're off running, you don't need to talk to us. Same thing, going out a suite of game boards where you're going to be social thing though, so that's popping up the movie theater before the trailers roll. Coke Zero paid for it, Regal Cinema struck the deal, they're now uploading it, they don't need to talk to us. So What's your pricing model? So we're still exploring that right now, since it's very custom right now, we're approaching it like a custom design and dev project, which is honestly ranging anything from five to 10K to a quarter million dollar project, massive, big interactive experience. So that being said, you know, once that, that Twitter active, or the, the white label uh, Twitter visualization is up and running, clearly it's not gonna be able to be you know, a quarter million dollar project, it's gonna have to be very affordable even for that coffee shop that wants to pop it up on their screen. So think about like, you know, wildfire apps, pricing breakdown, that's what we're looking at right now. Why, why don't you try to capture the um, kind of social ROI that you're creating? Yeah, so right now we're essentially in phase one of our product roadmap. Uh, the beginning of phase three is where we're diving, diving deep into what that data package is gonna look like. So right now, if we're doing a big program for uh, Chipotle at the Verizon Center, you know, we're gonna figure out exactly what type of social metrics they're gonna wanna track and figure it out and put together a custom, beautiful package of data that they wanna see and track the performance of the activation, ROI. Moving forward, there's absolutely going, that's what the, you know, our, our app, the beauty of Grandstand is, is probably figured out. You don't need to download the Grandstand application. What the Grandstand application will do once we build it is going to be the admin console, which is also going to be a way for us to communicate the data and performance in real time and then looking back retroactively. There are a lot of companies that are in the gamification of data or visualization of data, and I'm just wondering, you know, in terms of strategy, what, what strategy do you have to keep ahead of, ahead of the game? Yeah, so we're, 
Yeah, so we're sprinting right now. I mean, we're a creative agency. We're very lucky to work with some of the biggest brands in the world. So we're, you know, our initial customer pool are our current clients. So we're able to talk to big sports teams and major brands, major consumer-facing brands who are ready to do something new at that basketball game or at the movie theater or whatever it is. So honestly, it's the good old classic first mover advantage. And then after that, I, mean, I would say that you know, the space is much more crowded in terms of the data visualization and the Twitter visualization side of things. I'm really not seeing a lot of custom game boards, especially for those big major experiences, concerts, stuff like that. Being able to unlock the onboard or, or you know, unlock the set list before a big show or something like that. I haven't seen anything like that. Some people are doing something, you know, kind of similar, but no one's really nailed that yet. But you got, I'm sorry. Right. Who controls those displays? Is it the the venue where the displays are, or sure. is it the brands that they go through some sort of outdoor display company? Yeah, it depends. Since we're talking about the movie theaters, so uh, Fathom Entertainment controls a lot of that advertising out of Denver, and it's pumped out to Regal and Lowe's and everybody around the country, so they're controlling that. And then at um, you know, Daptronics is the major provider of, of Jumbotrons for everybody from you know, college basketball arenas to uh, Manchester United in England. So all of that, they have their own software suite packages. Um, some of their packages you know, pull from XML and RSS, so that's one way we can plug in. That's controlled on site by the, by the local AV team. And then um, you know, being able to just plug in into your display would be another option. So it depends on what the activation is. If it was at you know, Manchester United Stadium, um, I don't know, it's probably, if it's a, a major thing for Carlsberg Beer, there's probably going to be people from Carlsberg that are doing on-site redemption, and that's going to affect exactly who's controlling it and why. But there's a, a lot of ways, a lot of different people are we want to open this up to, this, uh, to, to the audience because uh, this time there's about four minutes left, four and a half minutes, and it's a very interesting uh, idea. Uh, I, I actually like the idea. And I, I have uh, DC, um, that actual facility uh, is run by some individual guys. Yeah, that's uh, I know that team of guys and uh, some of the owners of the religions and all of them are into obviously investing in technology. Oh, yeah. So we've got a good strategic partner there uh, that you're working with. Yeah. And to the investors if you haven't already tapped. Uh, so we're open up for questions. Come on. Uh, so who controls the gateway right now to the uh, movie theaters relative to the advertising distribution into the theaters? So you should look like Valley like Entertainment, they also do the, the live events. They control so much of that market and it's all out of Denver, which is great for them. Otherwise, you know, independent theaters would also be an excellent way to go for you obviously work directly with them, but talk to them about them and they've got it. <coughs> so that's a, that's a really great partnership for us, but obviously we want to provide a platform. We want to sell ads against it. If social bingo, Cup Zero can brand a whole board, or, you know, if you're unlocking 20 bucks and all the concessions, maybe you can raise ads against it. I don't care. We're just going to sell the platform. You, you, you know what's really, uh, I think, is effective is that there's a new behavior that has been ingrained in the past five years. It's happening right now while we're doing this. Why are we doing this you know, accelerator? Everybody is still yeah. texting, totally. interacting. This is this behavior is ingrained in us now. So to be in a basketball event, the reason why a basketball game, if you're there now and you notice, they actually play music while the game is going on and the ball is moving from one end to the other. The reason why they do that is because they know that just to watch the game in itself, itself, even though we all love the game. It's not enough to keep you engaged. So you give the background music down from play to play. Sure. So to offer, uh, to further the experience, if we can tap into this new learned behavior of uh, engaging, give us something else to do. Uh, certainly, it's a sporting event, uh, you know, a winner. It's, it's a space, think. and you know, obviously, then you feel the brand to monetize it. But it's a behavior that you tapped into. You, you have a good idea. I think the best validation we got was from the marketing and head of digital for the Oklahoma City Hunter. We literally said, I'm talking, we've had the same you know, brand partners for four years, you know, McDonald's and uh, Chick-fil-A and all this stuff, and we've been doing the same activation for four years. They're all coming to me at the same time saying, we want to do something different this year and we want to do something social. 400 people check in at a sporting event, who cares? It's not actually doing anything. Uh, I might have a, right? I might give this a couple of years and take a shot at it. <laughs> but it's true, there is something that needs to be done. So, uh, uh, Next question. That, that's true, though. Yeah, they're just sitting there with nothing to do in certain cases. All right, so. If, uh, if, if there's time. Okay, so uh, being that you uh, seem to be very connected to sports, 
And so a big thing, as a, as as Hammer have just stated, that during the game, like people can kind of lose it a little bit. And as you've seen with news, like the tickers, where there's constantly information going, wall of stories going on. Have you considered like picture in a picture or running like a ticker? So when you, I, I work, I'm a door guy and I work at a bar and or, or, so, sometimes, and uh, like so people could have the sports on. Is that something? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We've, talk, we've talked about the, the Twitter ticker and some of the visualizations, also game bars. So yeah, the jumbotron's great, but the better play might actually be on the screens at the suite level. So you go between like walking around a university or a bar, there's so many of these like beautiful you know, 45 inch LCDs just stacked up there and they're showing like static logos on rotation. Like who cares? You <laughs> We're done. All right, there you have the grandstand.